does a rounded leading edge on your splitter make more downforce? That's the question we're going to ask today. Also, what are the other effects it's going to have on the rest of the car? So, um, what we're looking at here, if you don't know, this is a E36. This is uh, one of our test model cars that we like to use because it's just like every other car out there. And what we're going to be doing today is looking at the leading edge of the splitter. This is uh, the first test, which is going to be a flat nose splitter. We're going to do a second test where we're going to add in this big rounded leading chamfer on it. You can kind of see there the two differences between the two there, flipping back and forth. And then finally, we're going to do one that's called the elf shoe. So you can see right here on the screen, we call it the elf shoe because this is the shape of it. It's got you know, a big round nose on it, that kind of stuff, and it is about an inch bigger. So keep that in mind um, as we go through the results. It is a little bit bigger. So that's gonna, this one uh, should make the most downforce because it's the largest. Um, square footage means a lot in, down, in, uh, in downforce and what we're doing. If you don't know who I am, my name is John Chikowski. I am the owner of Nine Lives Racing. We're an aerodynamics company specializing in motorsports. I've uh, been doing this since 2006 and um, working every facet of racing from club racing to pro racing. Um, and this is just another part of it. I'm not the end all be all expert on it, but I can share some knowledge with you guys. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, let's jump into the test. So the test itself uh, is done by this company called Pro, um, uh, Total Sim. And what Total Sim is, is they're a uh, pay to lease CFD software. The, they're trusted by all the top names in motorsports. If they don't, if you're in motorsports and you don't have a CFD software, this one is perfect because you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. Uh, actually, the genius who figured it out is the owner. He was a uh, lead aerodynamicist on one of the Formula One teams. Um, and trust me, it's one of the better ones. And this spits out really great data, and we don't have to think about it or do our mesh counts or any of that other stuff. It just put, pumps out great data, and it's constantly being verified. So know that what's coming out of this is accurate. Um, this is what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, we're going to do comparing some runs. We're going to be looking at uh, run 10, which is going to be essentially the flat nose we saw before. We're going to be looking at uh, run 11, which is the small little curve, and then R13, which will be, um, or let's see here, curve with the, uh, actually R12, sorry, uh, which is going to be our elf shoe, which is what we called it. So uh, let's look at the, uh, the data here. So uh, I'm going to click this little guy here, uh, which you can't see. It's just off your screen. But that's going to show us our drag numbers. That's going to be the first one we're going to look at. And I'm going to zoom in here so you guys get a good view of what we're looking at. I have essentially R10 selected. That's going to isolate that. That's using that uh, run as our base. And then all the other runs are calculated off of that. So right here is our drag and you can see right here here's our three runs. Our first run is zero because it's our control. You can see our small curve, our small little curve at the beginning um, increased drag by uh, one pound. So our drag went up one pound and then on the elf shoe went up 17 pounds of drag. Then we're going to look at uh, our let's see our drag to downforce numbers pretty much stayed the same throughout the whole thing you can see there. Uh, so which means it was kind of like a one-to-one -one gain. Um, we're going to pop in, I want overall downforce, which is actually over here. So you can see here, uh, our control is zero. The small little curve on it, on the leading edge, the small one, which is literally just a chamfer, uh, picked up two pounds of, of overall downforce. And then the elf shoe picked up the least, other than the control, or out of the two, uh, with one pound of downforce. Now here's something that I find really interesting. We're going to go over here and look at front downforce. This is just the downforce on the front axle by itself. And what we can see here, the small curve on the front picked up 23 pounds of downforce. Wild. Uh, over here it said two. Um, and then the clown shoe picked up 70, or uh, elf shoe picked up 77 pounds of front downforce and over here it says one so you're like okay 
why did we end up picking up such small numbers on overall downforce, but such like essentially good numbers on the front downforce? You can see here, these are the other tests up here. You know, picking up 100 pounds was kind of a big deal. Um, so, you know, 77 is a nice number. What happened? It's over here. The rear downforce increased uh, almost one to one ratio. So you can see front downforce went up 23 pounds of downforce, and the rear we lost downforce. So we lost 20 pounds of rear downforce. And then on the L shoot, picked up 77, which is a great number to see. But over here, we lost rear downforce, almost 75 pounds. That's a lot. It's a substantial amount of rear downforce getting lost. And if you guys are wondering, we test everything at 150 miles an hour. Um, so it's like, like man, what's going on here? Um, central downforce here, uh, <clears throat> I can tell you this being our kit, uh, this, this R10 here, so that's our medium downforce kit, uh, our balance was perfect right here at about 58%. And, you know, you want it to be within, you want your center balance to be within 10% of your vehicle's overall balance. Uh, because the idea is if your vehicle balance is flipped, so let's say you got, let's say you got a Civic and you got 60% front weight. And let's say you got only a wing on it, so you have 60% rear downforce on it. Uh, it means your center of balance for downforce is in the back and your center of balance for weight is in the front. That means once you start going faster, the more your balance is going to flip, like your handling is going to switch on you. So you're going to have a definite moment where you're trying to control this car and your handling is going to flip. So in order to stop that weird flip, we get our balances correct. So that's where we set up everything. Um, and if you get your balances right and everything's good, now, you, now it's time to start stacking downforce onto it. Now, now you can really just go for it, and the car is just going to feel better and better. Um, and, but you can see here, on with just the curved edge, we lost rear downforce, almost 5%. Now, this one being a good 50% balance, this one's being a 5% off, that's, you need about 7% of a shift in order to, for a non-professional driver to feel it. So if you... Just, just keep that number in mind. That, that kind of goes across all the avenues of motorsports. You know, if you change something 7%, an amateur will feel it. If you change something less than that, you're going to need a lot more finely tuned keister to tell if you know the, the performance shift has changed. Um, so 5%, I'm not even that concerned on it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's pretty, pretty healthy. Um, here, center downforce here. 20% shift. Now that's huge. Um, that's a nightmare. That's uh, you're going from a great 50% balanced car to you know let's let's actually look at the number. You're going from a great 50% balanced car to almost an 80% balanced car. Uh, so it's a 70 almost an 80% front downforce shift. So that's a ton. Um, let's figure out what's going on here. Let's let's look at some pictures. And I gotta make this smaller again. And, you know, we need to add in our run, so we want our, you guys can't see this, let me do this for you real quick, R11, R12, alright, so what I want to do, geometry plot, now it's got to give it a second to load these images up. What I want to look for is what we uh, call the X-ray. So this is, uh, let's go to the beginning. So this is an X-ray of the car. And this is telling us where on the car downforce is being made and where lift is being made. So uh, these pink colors, these are all downforce. You know, it, pink is the most downforce you can make. The reds are lift. So this is the, the lift of the roof here at this point lift on the tires, um, you know, lift on the mirrors, all that stuff. Uh, you know, it looks like it's getting made some downforce here in the back uh, on top of the trunk lid. So let's figure out what's going on. So this is essentially just our flat nose splitter, nothing crazy about it, no, no, no essence of trying to make it uh, more efficient or anything like that. But let's, uh, let's do this small curve on here 
And you see a lot of stuff shifts. And this is the only thing we changed was just the lead, the curve of the leading edge. See that? So the the car mo itself moves a little, so you kind of you kind of see it bouncing back and forth here. And uh, actually, I'm gonna make you guys a little bit. I'm gonna zoom this in for y'all. So excuse me while I mess with this. All right. So what we got going on here is uh, we're picking up some red. You see the red grow? See, like, look at this area right here. Watch that red pop up. Boink. So that's telling me that actually your driver's side or your um, back windows are starting to make lift right here. Right, wing looks pretty much the same. Uh, we're getting a little made, we're making a little bit of downforce right here. Um, we are essentially losing some downforce on this spot between them. So you see downforce there, downforce gone in that spot. Um, you can see that the splitter is getting a little bit bigger, um, which is a which is a thing. So that's getting bigger. Let me jump back to my R10. That's jumping away. All right. So that's our R10 right here. So this is our base. Splitter small. Base small. You can kind of see. All right. So you can kind of see right here. This area is growing from base to small small curve. So that area is growing. It looks like some area under the car and the wheel wells is starting to make some downforce. You know, you can kind of see on top of the tire there. It, it likes that. Um, but yeah, again, in the back, we're seeing some red grow here. Now let's jump over to that. This is our big curve. You can see a bunch of red right here on the back of the, of the roof. What's going on here is that leading edge, see if I can jump over here. So this leading edge is actually sending more air, uh, oddly enough, over the top of the car, right? So as the air hits this, more of it's coming over here, and it's acting in this area, just like that. So you'll see, so you can see that red starting to jump up there. So what we're seeing is this, uh, the back hatch of your roof is actually making more lift, and that's all from that leading splitter shape. Now, is that impossible to fix? Depends on where you're racing. If you're somewhere where you got, you know, R-Wing and it's kind of like the maximum size you can do it and they don't let you do gurney flaps and they don't let you do uh, dual elements, then it's a bad deal. This is actually pretty terrible balance um, going on. Now, if you're in a race class where they're going to be like, hey, you know what, you can do a dual element, go for it at this point. Um, so you can do the elf shoe on it and the dual element and, you know, the, the dual element will offset this down for us. Um, we did pick up 17 pounds of drag, which isn't that big a deal. Like it's small. It's not. You never want to just totally ignore drag, but it's small. And you you want to pay attention to that number. But 17 is not terrible. You know, it's for 100 pounds of downforce. I'll pay 17 pounds of drag all day every day. Um, but yeah. So in especially it's something at this level where we're kind of like picking at straws to pick. It to, so if you're finding 100 pounds of downforce and you're picking at straws, go for it. You know. But yeah. So. Does it make more downforce? Yeah, yeah, they seem to be doing pretty good. Even the, I feel like the curve splitter option is the uh, easiest to go for. Um, I feel like the elf shoe is something that you should be really thinking twice about doing if you have, like, if you have a um, a rear engine car or a rear heavy balance car, I wouldn't be looking at that. I don't like it. Um, if you have a front engine car like a Civic or you know something along those lines, then yeah, this is going to be a pretty good thing for you guys to do because it sent that balance all the way forward, and you could be running um, you know an interesting uh, wing shape. So, so yeah, that's it. That's our our findings. Um, if you got more questions, drop it in the comments. You know, every time we do one of these runs, we do have to pay for it, and so if you guys could share, like, subscribe, do all that fun jazz, um, that helps us out, and then. That helps send people to our website, they buy products, and then we can afford to do more of this and bring you guys all the free data we can. So um, do help us out. We really appreciate it. And other than that, you know, we're good for here. 
drop a comment if you're confused on anything. I'll do my best to answer it. And uh, thanks, guys.